إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا ونبينا وحبيبنا محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم نبيه وعبده بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his prophet and messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَانِ For those who fear, who love, who respect, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will have two heavens, not one. Some of us, for some strange reason, think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put us on this earth so we can be miserable and go through hardships all our life. And that is exactly the opposite of what the Quran is telling us and the opposite of what the scholars have told us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Jannatan, two heavens. The scholars said one heaven in this earth, or some scholars at least said that, one heaven in this earth, and another one insha'Allah in the hereafter. That's why the scholars said, inna fi dunya jannah. There is a jannah, there is a heaven in this dunya. Those who do not enter it in this dunya will not enter it in the hereafter. That is the heaven of being a company, of feeling the company of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Happiness in this earth <coughs> is what we call success. When you are successful, then you are happy. And happiness in the hereafter when you have another kind of success which we call in the adhan falah then when the muaddin said hayya ala al-falah so that happiness consists of najah and falah as in Arabic success and then falah in the hereafter to get to that you have to be happy in this life you actually will feel this happiness in this life before you feel it in the hereafter. When you accept what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained on you, when you feel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a part of your life, making a difference, that belief that makes a difference of what you do and what you don't do. Which leads me to those people that think that if I give to those people that I care for, if I give them everything that I have, if I hold off nothing, if I hold nothing back, I give them everything, then they are going to love me, and as such, I will feel happy. They are so wrong. The truth is, when you give people everything you have and you hold back nothing, then they will belittle you. They will take advantage of you. And they will not respect you. What you will hear from me today might be different than what you normally hear. But I hope that you listen until the end with your hearts open. Maybe we we'll learn how to value the right thing that we need to value. Which leads me to the question, 
Who is the most important <coughs> person in your life? When you ask this question to a lot of people, some of them will tell you, my wife. The wives might say, my husband, my friend. And most of them will tell you, of course, my children. Even though all of these answers are right, none of them is the correct answer. None of these is the correct answer. Listen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he says, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَيَطْغَى أَرْوَآهُ اسْتَغْنَى Human being, he will transgress. He will go over his rights. When he doesn't need you anymore, when he has everything that he can have from you, So, again, in reality, if you give everything that you have, then people will belittle you. And let's take uh, an example. Probably the most clear example is the mother to her children, or the father to his children. If you give all what you have to your children, what we have seen, what the scholars have seen, that most people that complain about the bad treatment from their kids are people that gave away everything they had and they take their life, everything in their life, for nothing but to serve and take care of their children and do their jobs for them. Most of the people that are thrown in the uh, elderly people houses and these things, they're for kids that their parents actually gave them everything they could give them. So why is that result? It's because of the ayah. You've given him everything and you demanded nothing in return. It is wrong to think that I am living for my children. You are living for you. And when you treat your children good, when you raise your children, when you take care of your children, you're doing it ta'abbudan lillah, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're doing it for your own self, not for your kid. You're doing it because it brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're doing it because you're taking care of something that brings pleasure to your heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that these children were there for you to enjoy. Children is a part of what makes you happy. It's something that's beautiful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. We take care of them, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And once they understand that, then they will give you respect. If they think that you are there for nothing but serving them, then what's going to happen? Then you are theirs. So what if they don't feel happy? So what if they're complaining about my behavior and what I say and how I answer and how, how I slam the door? So what? They told me that they're there to serve me. So they must be happy with what I'm doing no matter what I do. That's how the people, that's how creation, that's how the kids think. إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَيَطْغَى أَرْرَآهُ اسْتَغْنَى the mother or the father that ignores his own self or her own self do not take enough rest not only physical rest but also mental rest it through the day even like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have told us to do they will be always on the edge they cannot take care of their children with a good advice it will come out as shouting and fighting and the kid cannot wait for you to stop talking. Rather the person that takes the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the letter as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said for the mothers. Not about the older kids but for the kids that did not reach puberty. 
three times through the day, they don't have the right to walk into your room. يا أيها الذين آمنوا ليستأذنكم الذين ملكت أيمانكم والذين لم يبلغوا الحلم منكم ثلاث مرات. For you who believe, your kids and your servants have to knock the door and ask for permission to come in if you want to see them. Three times. Three times. When you have your qayula, when you want to go to sleep in the afternoon, after Isha and before Fajr, three times. The kid wants something. You tell him, you can wait. Mama needs to rest. Daddy needs to have his own rest. Three times that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given you so you can rest. Rest physically and rest mentally. Reevaluate what happened through the few hours that came out. What did you do with your children? What did you do with your house? What did you do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Imagine somebody that don't have enough time to rest through the day. Imagine a mother that cannot sit and relieve some of the mental pressure that she's living on all day long with the kids and with the father, with the house, taking care of, taking care of the financial situation of the house. This is not easy. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a relief three times a day, take it. It's not because it's only good for you. But when you are equipped with the right equipment, when you are rested, when you have the mentality, then you can benefit those whom you love better than any other time. And if you are not, then you cannot benefit them. And I tell the parents, demand respect. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created parents where they cannot stop loving their children, no matter what the children think. Parents cannot stop loving them. But you know what you can do? You can stop showing that love. If your kid does not obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first, does not obey your order second, he does not deserve to feel, to feel that he is loved. And if they, these two kids, if they don't give the total respect to the parents, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the winds of humility, you put them down. <coughs> Whether those wings are your PhD, your intelligence, your looks, you put them down for your parents. If they don't do that, then you should not show them the love. And that is your way of demanding. So who's the most important person in your life? It's you. How about my parents? Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. When he asks you to make, when, when he says the dua, Rabbi fil li wali walidayn. Oh Allah, forgive me, them, and my parents. So you come first. I'll tell you this. When you go in an airplane, and then the oxygen goes, level goes down, the masks come down. What is the instructions they give you? They tell you, put the mask on your own face first, start inhaling the oxygen that you need first, and then you take care of your child. And then you take care of anybody else next to you. That's exactly what it is. You have to take care of yourself to be able to take care of people around you. If you don't take care of your own self, you cannot take care of those whom you love. That's why Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu said, I've never done anything good for anybody. And I've never done anything bad for that matter for anybody. He told him, yeah, Amir al-Mu'mineen. How is that true? You are the cousin of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa you slept in his place, in, in the hijra, you did this jihad, you did this, you gave this. He said, read what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Isra. In ahsantum, ahsantum li anfusikum, wa in asa'tum falaha. If you do good, it's for your own self. 
And if you do bad, it's for your own self. For what? So you can look at yourself in the mirror and you say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I am okay. What I'm doing, I'm taking care of myself and, I'm, and as such I can take care of those who are my responsibility. So when you take care of them, you're actually taking care of your own self. I'll give you the story of Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu. He was walking with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu <laughs> as was narrated by Imam Ahmed. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he took his hand. You know the touch has a lot of meanings. And it's as if Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu felt that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is telling him, you are so dear and close to me. So he had to answer. He said, Ya Rasulullah, Wallahi, inni yuhibbuk. By Allah, I love you. He said, Ya Umar, more than your money? He said, yes. More than your kids? Yes. More than yourself? He said, no. Okay, let's stop here. This is where it all stops. It's my own self. How can I love you more than that? He said, La Ya Umar. It's no good. Until I am, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu is more beloved to you than your own self and everything else in this domain. Abdullah ibn Umar, one of the narrators of this hadith, he said, I saw Umar bin Khattab sit down in the masjid and then after a few minutes, he came back to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and he said, Ya Rasulullah, now I love you more than my own self. He said, yes, now you have complete iman. So Abdullah ibn Amr asked his dad, Father, do you have a key to your heart? You didn't love him more than yourself and then all of a sudden you love him more than yourself? How did you do that? He said, I sat down with, my, with myself and I asked myself, who is more, who do, who do I need more, myself or Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to go to Jannah? And then I realized I need Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more. So I figured I have to love him more because he is my ticket for my nafs, for my own self. He is my ticket to Jannah. So I loved him more. See the moral of the story? He loved him more because of his own self. Because he wanted to take care of his own self. When you come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your kids and your parents and all the people that you love, your wife and your husband, they're not going to be with you. You're going to come by yourself. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold you accountable for what you have done. Maybe to others, but what you have done. So you take care of your own self. You can take care of those who are your responsibility. How can I take care of my own self? In the next ayat. وَنَفْسِ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ نَسَّاهَا so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us the right way or the wrong way. He put a special feeling in our hearts, fitra, that we can tell where is the right and where is the wrong. Qad aflaha, again, falah. Qad aflaha man zakkaha. He will have falah, success in the hereafter, those who purify their own selves. Those who take all these covers, that we sometimes put, you know, sometimes when we look at ourselves in the mirror, we wonder. You look in the mirror and you see, who is that person? If you don't know that person, then you have a problem. If it's not exactly you, then you have a problem. If it's just a person that 
people expect you to be like that, whether it's funny, religious, uh, a good father, a bad father, bad language, good language. If, if you're doing it because people expect you to be like that, then, then the guy in the mirror is not you. You are what we call in Arabic, whatever other people are asking for. If they desire this kind of personality and expect from you, then you do it. You ask yourself, am I afraid of what other people think of me? Is this person, is the person that I expected when I was still young, that I will be, am I successful or am I not? Is this the success I was looking for? And if not, you need to do something about it. And you know when you ask people why are you not successful, why are you a failure, they will give you answers. And some people think it's a very good answer. Some people tell you, it's my luck. Your luck? Are you blaming Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your failure? Other people have the same kind of situation. And they made it. And they're good with their wives. And they're good with their parents. And they come to the masjid. And they take care. And they work for Islam. But you, because of your luck, one of the reasons that they give. A second reason that I'm extremely unfortunate to say that. Yahi, I'm possessed. Especially people who come from Arabia. This is very common in Arabia and it does not happen in Europe and, uh, and North America for some reason. I am possessed. Look into the ayat. Every ayah in the Quran. <laughs> Look into the hadith. Authentic hadith. Other than authentic, this does not apply to me. Look into the authentic hadith. There is not one ayah, one hadith that says that shaitan or iblis or jinn can possess a human being. There is not one. There is a lot of stuff in the culture. Yes. Is there anything in the Sahih Hadith? None. None whatsoever. But let's say, because some of the scholars took that, most people, and that's what the scholars are saying now, most people that you go to, to take that position out of you, they're liars. Con artists. Most of them. That's the least to say. And look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. He says, for the believers, in ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan. My slaves, you don't have any power over them. How about the kuffar? وَمَا كَانَ لِي عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانِ إِلَّا أَنْ دَعُوتُكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي Those who follow shaitan, I had no power over you. This is shaitan saying it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the people that followed him, that followed these things. He's saying, in the Quran, I had no power over you. I called you and you came running. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna kayda shaytani kana da'ifa. The plotting of shaytan is very weak. What, he, what did he say about humans? وَإِنْ كَانَ مَقْرُهُمْ لِتَزُولَ مِنْهُ الْجِبَالِ They can move mountains with the plotting that they can do. And you have seen in the last few couple of weeks what happened. And the last years that we have lived what happened in the Muslim Ummah. Abu Hanifa, the greatest Imam, that's what he was called, an Imam of A'la. Not by me, not only by scholars, but also by the other A'la, the greatest Imam. He says, when we, and this was the third, the third excuse that some people will give you. Brother, but somebody went to a magician and he wrote some stuff. It's sihir. That's why I'm a failure. Sihr? Abu Hanifa says, Sihr leysa lahu haqiqa. Magic does not have truthfulness to it. Meaning, 
It does not have a physical impact on you. It only has a mental impact. And it's very limited in time. These things you might not hear often. And I, this might be a strange thing that you will hear. But if you research, there is no ayah. There is no Quran. Except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. There is sihr in the Quran. Yes, there is sihr. What does the sihr do? Very limited things. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Musa alayhi salam. Yukhayyal ilayhi min sihrihim anna tas'a. When they threw, when the magicians threw the sticks, illusion happened. Yukhayyal. He thought that he see that these sticks and ropes are moving. That's what it does. It plays with the mind. Another excuse that we get. I had a dream. I had a dream. And I wish it's a dream like Martin Luther King's dream. It's a dream that just sets you back. Why am I saying all these things? The truth is, if we have bad luck to blame, and we have position of the jinn, and we have sihr, and we have the dreams, and we have the ayn, al ayn haq, al ayn tudkhul al-rajul al-qar, wa al-jamal al-qid, ayn hasad is true. But who can say that this is hasad, this is ilm al ghaib If we live hostages to these five things, then why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hold us accountable to what happens to us, to what we are doing? I am extremely sorry to bring it to you. If you see somebody bringing all these fives, or most of them, all what they are is they are a failure. They don't understand what Islam is, they have not read the Quran, and they did not read the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of these things are available. They're here. They're around you. They will happen, but it will not affect your life. It's you who decides to purify your own life. <coughs> so what do I do to purify myself? Each one of those points is actually a full subject. I'm just touching these. Scholar said, you probably want to sit with your own self to re-evaluate. This is what Scholar said, Muraqaba and Muhasana. You hold yourself accountable. You go back and look at what you have done. Was it right? Was it wrong? How can I fix it? Sometimes, to see your own mistakes is hard. And if that does happen, then you need to do staying with Sadiq. Call a friend. A friend is actually from the word Sadiq, Sadaqa. That means he's truthful with you. Some of these people that come and they laugh with you, and then they laugh at you when they leave. You want the person that even if he makes you cry, he's crying with you. Somebody that will actually be your mirror like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said al akhi you are the mirror of your brother so you can show him his mistakes rahimallahu mirin ahda ilayya ayubi umar ibn khattab may Allah give mercy to the person that gives me my mistakes so I can fix them so the first thing is sit with your own self and be truthful with your own self if you need help get a friend they will help you. The second thing is what we call al inkisaru lil and what the scholars call mujahidatul nafs. <laughs> you know, it's easy to apply Hadith Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the first half. Allahumma arini al haqqa haqqan. This is very easy. Oh Allah, show me the truth to be true, the truth to be true. But the other half is not easy. Walzukni tibaa and give me the courage to follow it. And show me the falsehood to be false, and give me the courage to make sure that I don't do it, that I stray away from it. This is the second point. Do mujahada. Fight your own self, so you can win that 
battle. If you win that battle, you can go to the world and then win any kind of battle after you are in control of your own self. <coughs> Another thing that we find with even Rasulullah that is needed for the personality to develop. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضَّلْ فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضَّلْ غَلِيدَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ You want to be acceptable by people? By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and then by people and in your own eyes so you, you look in the mirror you are proud of what you see you need to have mercy you need to be down to earth when you deal to, with people you need to have the love that will push you to work hard to take care of the people that you love to take care of the deen that you have to give the da'wah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the man that Prophet Musa alayhi salam was looking for فَوَجَدَا عَبْدًا مِنْ عِبَادِنَا آتَيْنَاهُ رَحْمَةً مِنْ عِنْدِنَا وَعَلَّمْنَاهُ مِنْ لَدُنَّا عِلْمًا Mercy and be down to earth when you deal with people is the third thing among things that you can do to purify yourself. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan wa zubna attiba'a wa arina al-baqila baqilan wa zubna ajtinaba. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we hear the good word and we will follow the best of it. Udhu Allah wa antum wa quuna bi kujab. والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam in 1948 we lost two precious places in the Muslim Ummah. We lost the most precious that we have lost which is the Rush Jerusalem to what is called right now Israel and we lost Kashmir to India last couple of weeks tens of our Muslim brothers were killed in Kashmir trying to ask for their rights all of these things yes there is more way more than that that have been killed in Syria also and our wounds are everywhere. But I wanted to note for me and for you and for everybody that every Muslim life matters. Maybe Palestine, Al Quds, Mecca, Al Medina have a special, and, and Tu Sayna have a special place in everybody's heart. But then all Muslims are equal. Land, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it sacred. But the Muslims are all sacred. As the scholars say, they are more important than the Kaaba itself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the blood of the Muslim more important than if you go and destroy the Kaaba itself one block at a time. I wanted to remind myself and remind my brothers that there is atrocity, there is atrocities happening all over the world for the Muslims. Allahumma ansur al-Islam wa a'izz al-Muslimin wa adil al-shirk wa al-mushrikin wa dhamm al-a'da'a ka a'da'a al-deen Allahumma unzil al-kitab wa mujri al-sahab wa hazim al-ahzab ihzim man a'da al-Muslimin wa ansurhum alayhim Allahumma la tarfa' lahum raya wa la tuhaqqiq lahum ghaya واجعلهم لمن خلفهم آية اللهم احصهم عددا واقتلهم بددا ولا تغادر منهم أحدا اللهم ارحم إخوان المسلمين في فلسطين وفي كشمير وفي سوريا وفي مصر وفي كل مكان يا أرحم الراحمين 
اللهم أيدهم بنصر من عندك وأمدهم بملاء من جندك واحرسهم بعينك التي لا تنام وانقلقهم بكنفك الذي لا يضام اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معاصيك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهول به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عادانا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا اللهم إنا نسألك عيش السعداء ونيل الشهداء والفوز بالقضاء والنصر على الأعداء اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من جهد البلاء ودرك الشقاء وسوء القضاء وشماتة الأعداء اللهم إنا نسألك عيشة هنية وميتة سوية ومردا غير مخز ولا فاضح إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وزد ودم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين